Uh, Michael, first things first, most importantly, how are you? Um, yeah, I, I'm not too bad. Um, still got a little bit of back and chest pain, um, which, yeah, is a little bit uncomfortable and find it hard to get comfortable when you try to sort of sleep and rest. But, um, yeah, I had a couple of rough days where I felt like I'd been beaten up a little bit. Um, but hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, I'm on the mend a little bit. Must have been concerning when you realised what was going on, both for you and for your family. Yeah, it is, obviously, you know, because obviously, you know, the last thing you want, you've got a 14-year-old, a 14-year-old, sorry, 14-week-old uh, young son, and obviously um, just, you know, um, myself, my wife and him. And, um, yeah, the, the, the first concern was just hoping and praying that they don't get any symptoms and, um, yeah, up to this uh, time, like none of them have, um, have uh, got any symptoms, which is, uh, you know, is good. And I just hope, hope that remains the same. And I guess that's also now you're having to live se slightly separated, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult when you're under the same roof. Um, but obviously, you know, you try and sort of do it as your best you possibly can. Um, and yeah, it, it, I've heard like different, you know, stories of people who've been under the same roof and, you know, continue to get tested through a 10 day period and you'd have one partner positive for the whole 10 days or, you know, whatever it takes. And then like the, the other partner being negative. So it, it, it works in sort of weird ways. Uh, COVID as I think everyone sort of found out over the last 10 months or so, but um, yeah, we're just trying to stay apart as much as we possibly can. But, you know, at the end of the day, it can be difficult when you're under the same roof. And do you feel that you're on the way to recovery? I mean, obviously, you're no med medical expert on this, but compared to how you felt a few days ago, are you feeling better? Um, yes and no. I think it's one of them. It's different. It's weird because at first, obviously, it was a lot of, you know, headache, fever, chills, and then obviously feeling achy. Um, now it's more of just feeling, you know, like I say, a bit of chest and back pain. Um, it's almost like as if someone's putting pressure standing on your, your chest or your back a little bit. Um, so I, I know I have to be a little bit um, cautious in terms of, you know, making sure that, you know, if I have any issues breathing and stuff like that, then obviously I'm going to have to react to it. But as it stands at this minute, you know, um, I've just got to cope with the, the uncomfortable feeling that it gives me at this moment in time. Before we talk about the practicalities, I'm sure a lot of Lincoln fans would want to pass on their best to you. I've seen on our social media, there's a lot of fans getting in contact, wishing you and the family all the best for the for the next couple of days. No, yeah, no, I appreciate that. And um, yeah, no, it does help because obviously, um, you know, it's, uh, it is difficult and it's one of them where obviously, you know, up to now, certainly in your sort of your close friends and family, um, we've read, we've read about the virus. We've seen it all over the news. It's happened so much to so many people, even within football and sport, etc. So, but until it's all, it, it affects you closely and people around you closely, obviously, uh, you realise um, sort of how serious it can be. So, um, yeah, like I say, fingers crossed. Hopefully, um, I'm on the mend and um, yeah, get back to doing what I, I do best. Uh, on the practical side of things, tomorrow, assuming that you're feeling well enough, are you going to be leading on the on the team meeting via some something like Zoom? No, I mean obviously what I will do, and and you know I think this will never change. That the messages that certainly I send out to the players since they've come to the football club in terms of the key key things that we look look for as a group in and out possession and how we deal and handle situations. I'm I'm pretty you know persistent and and. Um, over a period of time, consistent with the messaging that I put out, you know, so, you know, that's the reason why you have, you know, have staff, you have good staff. Um, and David Kerr's like some very experienced, you know, assistant manager and he's been an assistant manager at all sorts of levels. Um, over the period of time, he knows me, knows what I'm about and what I expect. Um, clearly me and him will have conversations about the messaging that has to go out to the players and obviously, a lot of the preparation for the Wimbledon game tomorrow. I've been in discussion with the with the staff of what I think we should be doing and how I think we should be sort of handling that situation, how we should be preparing for the game. 
they know that I'm, I'm confident and got every um, belief and faith that they will deliver that to the players properly. Um, and I'll send a, you know, a message to the players personally at some point this evening or tomorrow just um, you know, to tell them what I expect. And I just don't want to use it too much of an excuse. I think I've said all along, if you give an example of the, the Shrewsbury game a few weeks back where we played in the, in the um, Papa John's Trophy, the actual team on that night played no differently to what was normally considered a strongest team. So um, it, it goes back to that really where, yes, you know, they may be used to hearing my voice more than more than anyone else is in team meetings, in preparation to, to games. But if it's not there for one game, that shouldn't be an excuse to to go into the game feeling any less confident than what they should, should do. So just to clarify, it will be very much David Kerslake taking charge and, and you'll be just um, back, at, back at home, hopefully feeling better and watching on iFollow. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously I'll be watching the game and I'll be getting messages to the to the team before the game and at half time. Um, and that'll just be uh, over the phone and um, speaking to, 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 to people that are in the stands. Um, and I'm sure their messages will get sort of passed on to the players at half time and, and, and even before that, before the game. Um, you know, so at the end of the day, like I say, you know, the messages that I want to get across will get across. They'll just be passed on and, and they'll be given to the players by David and then. You know, during the game, at the end of the day, like I say, him and the staff. I've got fantastic staff, and I said that before. I've got great belief in them. Um, a lot of them are young people as well who got uh, going to have really good futures in the game. So it's you know it's an opportunity for them to then to sort of step up and um, and and take the opportunity, which I'm sure they will do. When did you start feeling rough, and uh, what what were your first symptoms? Uh, Monday, um, yeah, Monday, um, like. Tea time is early evening, right? Headache. Um, um, didn't really think too much of it, you know. Anyone can get a headache at any time, but um, just got progressively worse. And then on Tuesday, yeah, just started to sort of snowball a little bit, feeling feeling rough in myself and a little bit aches and pains, and yeah, a little bit of lack of energy. Um, and then obviously Tuesday evening. Yeah, it wasn't a good night for me. Didn't sleep, hot sweats, etc. Um, which obviously led to me sort of being tested on Wednesday. And um, if I'm being honest, Mark, it, you know, I had the test, but I didn't have to wait for the results. You know, I think you know, with the way I felt at the time and what I'd gone through on the Tuesday, uh, I was just waiting to to get the positive and um, think to myself, right, try and try and get over the worst as quickly as I possibly can, and and hopefully. Like you've just mentioned with Michael there, hopefully try and avoid um, my wife, Jess, and, and my son, Ned, to not get any of it. Yeah. Uh, and you've had tests at the club, I guess, with people you've come into close contact with? Yeah, I mean, to be fair that to the club, the, the, you know, the, um, the, staff have, um, the staff have been tested uh, that I've come in contact with. And luckily, from our point of view, those that did come in contact with have... Um, I've tested negative, so um, that's why obviously the, the game tomorrow um, is, um, is okay to be played. Obviously, there's been a lot of people getting it, a lot of pe- a lot of matches being postponed and everything. There's not going to be many games in League One tomorrow. Do you think the season can sort of carry on as it is? There's talk of in the Premier League of having a suspension. Do you think we should try and carry on with the game as much as possible? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's opinions, in it? I mean, obviously, we're not scientists and... I suppose I've heard of like, you know, curtailments and stuff like that. But, you know, from what I'm being told and what I've read, you know, an actual curtailment for, for two weeks or not, not a curtailment, but a suspension for two weeks. Um, there isn't, you know, real great evidence from, from those who are discussing it or talking about it that it would you know, actually work and it's guaranteed to work. So I can understand both sort of sides of the argument, but ultimately, it, you know, it's one of them where, um, there's been so much protocol that's been put in place to try and handle this situation that, um, you know, for us, we've done really, really well to get to a point where we're at this moment in time. And obviously to get to the, what is it, the 20th game uh, before it becomes a, a bit of a disruption for us, I think everyone can take a lot of credit and um, 
you know, that there's a lot of professionalism that's gone in place from everyone at the football club because, listen, you, we all know that, you know, you could literally pick this up anywhere, whether it's a supermarket, petrol station, wherever it may be. It's just, you know, wrong place, wrong time, so to speak. But um, for us to go um, into the, the 20th game and obviously, you know, only myself really. And uh, I think that... Um, you know, it's credit to everyone that how they've sort of handled the situation and been professional of how they've tried to keep everything uh, how it should be from a protocol point of view. And I think there's going to be a round of mass testing at clubs across the AFL from next week. I mean, I guess that's got to be a good thing. Yeah, it, it is a good thing. And I think that would be the, the big test, if I'm being honest, Mark. I think that would be the one where, obviously, up till now, because of, obviously, the, the expense that it does cost to, to be continually tested, Obviously, the Premier League and the Championship have got the funds to be able to do that. So, I think we're going to have a little bit more of an understanding when everybody gets tested next week um, to see how sort of prominent sort of the, the new the new um, virus is such. Um, you know how much that is sort of taking its toll on the rest of the country. Um, obviously, the rules are changing all the time. When do you hope to be back at the club? Is it a couple of weeks? You're going to have to self isolate for ten days. Ten days, I'm being told. So, um, obviously, from 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 Monday when I first started feeling uh, great, it pr- it'll either be Thursday or Friday of next week. Um, you know, obviously that will depend and make sure that you know I'm fully um, you know fully okay by then and you know symptom free as well. On to the football. Um, what what are you expecting from uh, Wimbledon tomorrow? Yeah, I mean it's going to be a difficult game for for the lads, and um, you know. Even though Wimbledon have lost four of the last five games, you know, you look at the games, which I have done and I've been able to do because I've not been able to do much else. Um, they, 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 they've played well in the games and they've been in the games and, you know, you've only got to look to, to the Oxford game last week where um, they actually, you know, dominated for, for long spells in terms of the, the amount of chances that they had and the, the quality of the chances they had. And I think you said everything about their performance on the day that, the Oxford's uh, goalkeeper Jack Stevens got the got the man of the match, so we're aware that it's going to be a difficult game. But ultimately, at the same time, they have lost four out of five for a reason, and we've got to make sure that you know we we use that to our advantage and and, and make sure we press on their their weaknesses and um, continue the vein of form that we've shown over the last few games. What are Liam Brinkett's chances of uh, being involved tomorrow? Yeah, well, he's trained. Um, for the last probably four or five days now, so um, yeah, he's got he's got a great chance. I've not spoke to anyone. Um, I'm due to speak to the staff after we've had this call now, but I've not spoke to see is it, if anything uh, if there was any issues this morning in training. But uh, no one's been in touch, so I'm guessing everything was fine this morning before they left to go to to Wimbledon. So if that's the case, then he'll have a great chance of uh, being involved tomorrow. And Conor McGrandall still a week or two away. Yeah, he's going to be probably mid Jan um, before he's involved. Maybe towards the end of Jan. Um, but uh, he had a scan the other day, and um, the scan pretty much backed up what the medical staff thought it was. So that was a good thing. And the uh, finally, the uh, perennial January question: anything imminent on the transfer front? We're we're, we're reasonably confident that you might get something, uh, or we might get some good news on Monday or Tuesday.